This morning I went down the street to go to this class. It's basically 45 minutes of body circuits in a heated room, which I love. I love mixing that in with the running that I do. And uh, basically the thing kicks off. And somewhere in, you know, maybe the last third of the class, we were doing some weighted squats. And right at that point where, you know, you're in the thick of things, your legs start to burn, heart rate's elevated, and you can start to, you know, really feel the temperature of the room. The instructor said something that I thought was absolutely incredible. She goes, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, the discomfort that you feel right now is a privilege. It's a privilege to suffer through this. It's a privilege to be here working on yourself when most people are at home. It's a privilege to be in a position to move through the resistance you feel right now. And that message moved me. And how can you even think about discomfort after that perspective had been laid out? How can you see a few minutes of fatigue as anything other than the small price uh, of improvement? It's funny how the same things we consider to be torture or punishment, if they're externally required of us, they become empowering when we know that we deliberately chose them. You know, and this feeling, it was definitely self-induced. It was chosen, right? I decided to be there in class that day. It was what I needed become just a little bit better to obtain just a little bit more. And what a privilege. I've learned over the years to manage pain. You have to. You have to uh, immerse yourself in, in an often less than ideal short term so that you can bring about results of greater magnitude. I've always accepted this. I've always known it to be true. I believe, you know, in my own world, I've, I've sacrificed accordingly. But I don't recall the last time I was overtly thankful for the obstacles in my way. I don't remember the last time I saw my struggle not as a necessary burden, but a gift. As something not thrown at me, but presented to me. Think for a second about the finitude of life. The one in 400 trillion odds of being born, a number that I came across somewhere that I I certainly can't validate, but I don't think you need to to get the point, right? The odds of being here are incredibly slim. Yet somehow we won. We all received winning lottery tickets. Here we are. On a strange planet with options to choose from, paths to decide between, and a giant ticking clock. And given these circumstances, aren't we doing a disservice to ourselves to not at least see what we're capable of, what we can do, build, create, and become? I certainly think so. And what is the cost of that evolution? It's discomfort. It's forging our future by walking through fire. It means intentional hardship. And to not see that as the gateway to life's infinite opportunity is missing the mark. Why shouldn't you feel lucky about yourself transforming in real time? Why shouldn't you feel proud of paying a steeper price for a better view? Why shouldn't you be delighted to unpack the mystery and the adventure contained in life? This isn't something you have to do on your way to point B. This is something you get to do on your journey to become whoever you choose to become. So when the pressures of life press down upon us, test us, perhaps solely acknowledging its utility is insufficient. Maybe it's more. Maybe it's something that should be celebrated, adored. Today was a reminder to be thankful for the body that can endure the turbulence, thankful for the mind that can manage and overcome the chaos.
thankful for the opportunity to be here to begin with and the freedom to choose the difficult thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to live in such a way that as I place my head on the pillow each and every night, I'm grateful for the privilege. What if I told you that you already know what must be done? You just need to put yourself in position to do it. You need to unlearn the rules that crippled you, the ideas that confined you. We are in constant pursuit of the thing that will magically right all our wrongs, the answer that will give us something we've never had. No, everything you need, you have now. You just need to allow it to flourish. Declutter, simplify, remove all that unnecessary stuff and walk your path. Einstein once said, everyone is a genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. And what's great about this is the idea that who we are is not found. It's acknowledged, it's accepted. And I think in our world, there are so many fish, as Einstein says, trying to climb trees that it creates a sense of learned helplessness. We are judging ourselves using the wrong metrics, equipped with the skills, the characteristics, and and the abilities to win in our own arenas, but playing in someone else's. How loyal are you to your own instincts? Do you do what you know is right? Or what you feel obligated to pursue? When was the last time you listened to you? In Tim Grover's Relentless, he introduces a brilliant metaphor. He says, a lion doesn't have to be taught to be a lion. It just is. It hunts, runs, roams, explores, lives life the only way it knows how. Now, if you capture a lion, bring it to the zoo or put it in a cage, it will carry itself differently. It will lie down, move around lazily, sluggishly navigate its little space, The passers-by, they'd never know what that lion really is. They'd never know what it looks like in its element. But despite all this, it is still, in fact, a lion. It maintains that killer instinct. His characteristics haven't disappeared. And if it were released from the cage, It would go right back to doing what lions do, being what lions are meant to be. It just has to ditch the cage. And the point is, perhaps, so do you. There's a little light in your soul that waits day and night to explode into something meaningful, where your nature meets your environment, 
where the I shouldn't do this, the odds are impossible, the I'm not good enough, I can't lose what I have now, where all that fades away, where it's left behind you. And you're finally free to reign over your own territory, your own life, your own empire. See, we constantly feel like our glasses are empty, like we're missing pieces, in need of something, just one more thing. That will be our answer. That's all we need. And I can say with confidence, it's not about what you need. It's about what you no longer need. It's about mitigating the noise so what matters can shine through. Removing those people in your life that drag you down or add no value. It's about getting rid of the things that make your world unnecessarily complex. Removing the need for immediate validation, success, and accolades. And instead embracing the little hinges in your life that, as W. Clement Stone said, will ultimately swing the biggest doors. We all have the lock, the key, and the map right there amidst the trivialities of our day to day. And we walk right by them, look right at them. We pick them up and put them down. But have we learned to truly see them? Everything starts with that awareness. My life did not change until I recognized that until I began asking myself questions I'd never asked before. Big picture questions, obvious questions. But just because it's obvious doesn't mean it's always intuitive, right? What do I want out of life? What is important to me? What's something I love doing that I can dedicate myself to, that I can commit to being great at long term, that I'm so immersed in that when the inevitable down times arrive, the losses, when the doubt and insecurity creeps in, I can keep moving forward because I'm so in love with the process that I don't let the little things like that define me. As Jordan Peterson famously puts it, choose your sacrifice. A life of meaning isn't easy, but there's nothing more fulfilling. Because when you embark upon that journey, it allows for the evolution of the self. We can become something more. As Nietzsche says, those who have a why to live can bear almost any how. We equip ourselves for anything the universe can throw at us. We position ourselves to evolve. Viktor Frankl says man's main concern is not to gain pleasure or to avoid pain, but rather to see meaning in his life. To align yourself with and pursue that which is your reason for living, that's how we transcend the day-to-day life we've come to know. When we breathe in possibility, dance with the infinite, and of course, something of this magnitude, It consists of ups and downs. It's not the easy road, but it's the one worth taking. Our metaphorical lion doesn't succeed every time he's prowling for food, but he doesn't roll over and die. He doesn't recede or quit being a lion. He gets up tomorrow and does it again because it's who the lion is. And while life doesn't unfold until you find that same thing for yourself. And people say, well, I don't know. That's the problem. I have no idea. That's not the problem. That's the essence of life. That's the beauty. You're here to explore and find that for yourself. But the power is knowing you're not looking for something or someone to save you. You're looking for an environment in which you can best be you. You're looking for the right terrain to share your gift with the world. If you have what you need, then you're not looking for the product. You're looking for the delivery mechanism, the vehicle to nurture and transport your value to a world that desperately needs it. 
You're looking to build yourself up and in the process, amaze yourself. Look, what you're capable of is beyond comprehension. It's limitless, almost unfathomable. But it is, as Ryan Holiday says, a confidence that must be earned. So start now. Earn it. Let yourself succeed. Your intuition knows what feels right and what doesn't. But the seed must first be planted. So make today about setting yourself up for success. Turning off the idea that you're one piece away from completion. One minute away from starting. That you're almost ready. No, you are ready now. You have what you need now. You know what's necessary now. You just have to be your own ally. Put yourself in position to be yourself. Let your value shine double down on what matters to you. Look, it's not a game of acquisition. It's a game of courage. Do you have the courage to be who you are? To follow that potential, that possibility into the great unknown. A lot can change with the words, it's okay. My moon is not the same as their moon, and that's, well, it's okay. Same playing field, just different rules. Same sky, different constellations, same clouds, different shapes. We need not permission to follow that star that lights up our world. Just a willingness, a comfortability, just a curiosity. Because where the right path provides clues, the wrong one gives instruction. And over time, the difference between the two accumulates, it becomes substantial. Your journey should give you just enough. The moon's radiance should highlight the hand in front of your face, reveal that potential next step. It should expose the options right in front of you, and that is enough. And sure, sometimes it feels like it would be nice to know, to walk an easier path, one that's not your own, have everything lit up, no questions, no mystery, and while there's comfort in taking this path, it's not yours. It's not your journey, it's not your moon, it's not your light, and it won't reveal your answers. So feel free to leave, to walk away, because it's okay. It's okay to not have the answers. It's okay to follow a gut feeling. It's okay to leave the old in pursuit of the new. It's okay to want more, and it's okay to not know where more is. It's okay. I often think if a courageous few are the reason that I'm not writing these words out with a quill pen by candlelight, then think about what my own small acts of courage could become. Why not believe, start, try, put myself out there? Why change or concede or surrender to a set of standards that aren't mine, put in place by people who aren't me? Their moon is not the same as my moon. Their path is not my path. And if I'm choosing between seeing a world that I've settled for in its totality, or seeing one that actually means something as it's slowly pieced together, I'm taking the latter every time. Well, how do you know it will work out? The brain asks the heart. You don't. And I think that's exactly how you know you're in the right place. It's when you have all the answers, the certainty, and the reassurance in the world that, well, something may be missing. Not missing from the external, but missing from within as you move through the external. It's the classic square peg in a round hole. And the very reason we should carry on is because it's better to be a square peg in search of a home 
than to be whatever it is that would keep us safe, quiet, and securely contained within a square box. It's not that my way is right and your way is wrong. It's that for me to live, I must find my way and you, yours. Because a life lived according to someone else's rules is a house built on sand. It may be stunning, extravagant. It may not warrant a second look from someone passing by, but it only takes time to reveal the inherent flaw. It doesn't matter what you build. If it's on top of a bad foundation, it will ultimately come down. Time will take it down. So be weary of where you decide to plant your stake in the ground. Be thoughtful about where your feet take you and the concessions you allow in your life. We often think permission is what separates the present from the ideal. And what I've learned is that time keeps coming, permission does not. To live fully is a self-appointment. There is no letter that comes in the mail explaining this. Although, sometimes I catch myself waiting for its arrival. Where the crowd goes, my instinct begs me to follow. Where the comfort lives, my predisposition is to knock on the door. I'm human. But I know that to resist what comfort offers is the battle of a lifetime. Their moon is not mine. Their solutions will not fix my problems. I have a puzzle to put together, a masterpiece to assemble, as do you. So embrace your world. Follow your rules. Howl at your moon. Because if you do it right, it will be different. It will be yours. And that's not just okay, it's what makes life worth living. Be loved or be hated, but never simply tolerated. In life, you can live to chase opportunity, or you can live to avoid failure. And there are two very different things. Rather than pursue, we often avoid. We avoid failure. We avoid criticism. We don't want to ruffle feathers or disrupt. No, we choose to simply exist. Never condemned, but never extraordinary. Just tolerate. And it's an interesting dilemma. Because the best things exist on the extremes. Life's fringes. That's where you find your accolades, your accomplishments. That's what we celebrate. It's where you need to be. And you get there not by worrying about what everyone around you thinks, but by taking your strength, your unique self, holding on and pressing the pedal to the floor, going all in. And yeah, that means suddenly, my friend, you are ex. You are vulnerable. You are now out there. It means those who don't have the courage to chase their dreams, they will find you threatening and they will let you know. But it also means that the shackles are off. The door is open. The light is green and you can build from the ground up. You can build the life you want. The finish line has now become more visible than the prospect of falling along the way and you've granted yourself permission to run through it. 
sure some will love you for these accomplishments, some will hate you for these accomplishments, but let me reiterate the word accomplishment. Because when you live to be invisible, it's a term that rarely presents itself, I promise. Life, it rewards the bold. Those who are bold in their beliefs, bold in their actions, their dreams, and their pursuits, they are not for anyone but you. And years later, when you look in the mirror, you'll know that you gave every single thing you had to a life that meant something to you. Loved, yes. Hated, sure. But merely tolerated, no.